Hey guys, today on Chris Does Everything, we're gonna do another Suron video. I can't get enough of this thing. So in my quest for power, I'm probably gonna be upgrading a whole bunch of stuff. But to start with, I'm going from the stock 48 tooth sprocket to a 55 tooth sprocket. This came from the Suron shop. And uh, if you're gonna replace your sprocket, you're gonna need a couple of links of chain to go with it. They included it. I'm happy with that deal. So let's take a look and see what takes actually do this. So here's a cool little trick. Take If you do a lot of motorcycle or bicycle stuff and you're taking chains on and off all the time, you can take an old pair of diagonal cutters, grind down one edge so it ends up looking like this, and that makes a really easy way to go in and pop off a master link. So we're gonna do that right now. Let's watch and see how it goes. All right, so first thing we gotta do to get the back wheel off is take off that master link. And then we're gonna take off the chain and get rid of the 48 tooth sprocket. Now that 55, seven more teeth, it's gonna give us a little less top end speed. I don't really care about that. And it should give a significantly more throttle response, more torque, more low end. I'm 185 pounds and that's, you know, undressed. So having a little bit more horsepower handy, uh, or at least a little bit more torque is hopefully going to make a difference. So I'm going to use this now and just pop that clip off of there. So with the chain out of the way, you just have to undo this axle block bolt, take the axle out, and that wheel should just come right out of there. And I'm going to guess that's about a 17 millimeter. All right, so a 17, 17 millimeter nut, and uh, you got to hold the other side with a six millimeter socket Allen key gizmo. At that point, we should just be able to pop this axle out. So when you go to take the wheel out of there, the, the rear brake caliper is not attached to anything that mounts on this little slidey guy here. And you just have to wiggle that around a little bit in order to drop the, the wheel. But once you get it out, we're ready to switch. All right, so we're about to pop the sprocket off, take a look and see the difference in size. All right, so bigger gear, Again, a little bit less top end, a little bit more torque right off the line. Five bolts, and we're in business. These sprocket bolts are pretty tight. That last one doesn't want to come out with the impact, so I'm just going to slowly, carefully take it out because I don't want that to break. So you'll notice. These all have the telltale blue mark, which says, hey, somebody at the factory actually Loctited this bolt. Obviously, sprocket bolts are important. We want to make sure that we're using blue Loctite on each of these as it goes back in. So putting this back on, I use the impact just snug them down a little bit and then once they're snug do it by hand there probably is a torque setting for these I don't know what that is off the top of my head do it when you tighten them in a star pattern and then basically now they're reasonably tight. I'm just going to give each one a little bit more of a snug. Again, by hand. And we'll call it a day. And then 
And this is the kind of thing you're going to want to come back and check after you've ridden it for a few miles. Make sure everything is still good. All right, this is ready to go back on the bike. All right, so with the sprocket, we got a couple of extra lengths of chain and a new master link. You'll notice this is O-ring chain, so we're gonna have to put the O-rings on there when we put it together. And we're gonna end up now with two master links. Normally, on a motorcycle chain, at least something that's uh, high performance, you wouldn't wanna have two master links. For this bike, the way that it's configured at the moment, that is not a big deal. So we're just gonna take this over to the bike. Uh, it even comes with a little bit of grease and uh, put this on and we'll tighten things up. All right, so when you go to put your additional piece of chain on, this is an O-ring chain. So when you take it apart, you wanna make sure when you put it back together, you've got the link with the two O-rings. That's gonna go through the chain and then the extension and then you gotta have two other o-rings don't lose these when you take it apart it's pretty easy to move to lose them all right they go on that link then you've got the plate which is the actual outside of the link and of course i can't see what i'm doing and then finally the outside piece All right, so extension, chain, perfect size, which is good. We'll straighten out the wheel in a minute. Got to put the other master link on here. If you look at this master link, you can see the bottom is not quite closed and it's because of that o-ring chain so i'm going to probably pop that one back off of there squeeze that together a little bit more and then try to get that clip on it's uh sometimes a pain in the neck with these chains other thing to note when you put on a master link is you want the closed end in the direction of travel right so we're rolling that way tires rolling that way close end facing So after way too much frustration, we're back together. The original master link, right? Here's the new master link. Here's the original one. Just all kinds of problems with that, trying to get it squished enough to be on there. I'm gonna order a couple of decent ones. For now, enough is enough. Power. And, uh, Time for a little test ride. So we got it all back together. We got the one wonky master link. I'm gonna order a new one. I just don't like that. And then we uh, rode it on the stand, just you know, cranked it, no problems, got on it, started to just ride around gently, and we were getting some chain noise. Not really chain noise, but like, you know, every couple of revolutions you'd hear whack, whack, whack. And so we're like, oh, Bike, the back wheel's not perfectly straight. We straighten that out, no good. Are the chains too loose? The chain's too tight? No, 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 no. And we're watching it really carefully. And then all of a sudden, I happen to have the right view and I could see something happen. And basically, bottom line is the bolt going through the Kaniwaba pedal bracket here. And this would be same bolt if you had the original bracket. It's just sticking out a tiny little bit too far. And as a result of that, it's hitting the edge of the new master link, which sticks out just a tiny little bit. So solution, I'm just gonna take off a tiny little bit of this bolt so that it goes through the bracket, but is not sticking out on the other side, and we should be good to go. That was a pain in the neck. All right, so cut that bolt off short, no more noise slipped uh, cutting the bolt in my vise and smashed up my hand. But now let's see what the difference between 48 and, uh, and 55 teeth is. So I'm just gonna 
go up and down the driveway once here and get a seat of the pants feel. Definitely a bit more torque. Feels pretty good. All right, so we're done. Uh, what can I say? I like it better. Feels like it's got more torque. Uh, still. You know, sometimes you get the front end up, got a couple of decent wheelies going. Sometimes it's a little bit harder, got to get used to it. Plus having the pedals on there, you know, center of gravity is a little bit off for me. So still working on that. My advice would be when you buy one of these and you get the extra chain, get an extra decent master link. The stock master link setup is just not particularly good. So I'm going to get one of those. Other than that, cool mod. Top speed, I'm not quite sure. I just buzzed up and down the road quick. I got up to about 37 with no problem. You know, top before I think was 48, 49. I'm gonna guess, you know, I'm still probably gonna be close to 40 miles an hour, but I'll post another video and we'll, we'll find out. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching.